And Liz, I'm going to go ahead and make you co-chair as well. Or co-host. Co-host. I don't know what that, all that means because I don't know how to pull up the stuff anyway. So you know, I'm going to be relying on you. Um, this is 6.30 p.m. on um, Wednesday, October 18th. And I am calling to order the meeting of the Amherst, Re Amherst Towns Human Rights Commission. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and you can see the instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by way of technical technological means. Um, our agenda is posted, but before that, I'm gonna take just a little bit of liberty to say to Deborah, I'm glad you're here. I actually wasn't expecting you to be here um, as a person and as a member of the Human Rights Commission. I am extending our help, heartfelt um, prayers and blessings to you and your families and all of those who you know that have been directly and indirectly affected by the unrest over in Israel. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, Deborah had left our meeting um, because she had got some messages that were troubling for her. I'm glad to see us here and um, yeah. Thank you. It's an ongoing <clears throat> trial to stay present with everything that's going on in life here, but it's also um, a good diversion. So I'm glad to be here with you all. Well, thank you. Um, our first agenda um, is opening remarks, which I did. Announcements. Um, we will get to some other announcements and committee reports if we don't have any general announcements. Um, in our agenda review, we have our call to order. We have our reports and comments. Um, actions and discussion items are listed and updates are listed. Um, we are expecting, hopefully, um, Paul Balkerman and um, Lynn Greshemeyer to address some of the things that we um, came from our meeting our retreat that happened on the 9th. But on the 8th. So first, public comment. If there are any members um, in the audience that wish to address the Human Rights Commission, um, please raise your hand. And I'm going to defer to Jennifer to let them in because I'm on my phone and I don't even know how to do that. Are there any members of our audience that would like to speak now? I do not see any hands raised. I just wanted to let you know that Paul is here in the meeting and listed as an attendee at the moment. Okay. So is he in the meeting or in the audience? She went back. Um, so the next item is item number three, action and discussion items. Um, So Paul is here. So we have town council president and town manager discussion. We'd like to discuss the town council representative to the HRC, our budget and our HRC bylaws. So Paul, one of the things that came out of our meeting is that we have uh, adjusted, amended our bylaws. I do believe that it was reported in our retreat that you received them a few months ago. Um, Knowing that there's a lot of things that are on your hot plate right now, we'd like to know, have you received our bylaw uh, requested changes? Have you looked at them? What's the next steps? And um, when can we um, get something from you, whether you are um, accepting them, adjusting them, or not accepting them? Paul. Oh. Great, thank you. Um, yes, I did receive them and welcome everybody and um, 
and thanks for your service here. Um, I did receive the bylaws um, and Pamela shared them with me. We have gone th through them, so I understand them. I guess what um, I would like to hear a little bit from you, is, or, and I know I appreciate the time you put into it at your retreat, especially on that Sunday of a three-day weekend. Very impressive. Um, it, but it, these are clearly going to be required to be reviewed by our town attorney and, um, you know, and get your sort of, uh, feedback on sort of what the goals of some of the changes are so I can understand a little bit better. I know you put a lot of time into it. So before I just gave it to her code, I wanted to make sure, and it might mean that she might have to come and talk with you to understand better. And the things that she looks at are compliance with law, um, liability issues for the town, if there are any, and a sort of like legality thing. So are we are we attempting to preempt anything that's in existing law? So she'll look at the different pieces of that. And I had a conversation with her this morning. So she's aware that this is coming her way um, soon. So would it, would it make sense to go through the major changes or is that so I can understand the things? Um, I'm going to defer to Ronnie and Tyler on this because they were directly involved with some of the changes. Um, Tyler, would you like to speak on that or... Is it our wish that we are just asking Paul to take a look at them, to pass them on to the attorney, and maybe have the attorney then question? That's another them. option. Yep, that's so, another option. Tyler, Ronnie, I'm going to defer to you for that. Tyler? Yeah, um, I think that it could be productive to briefly go over it, especially if there's any specific um, areas of it uh, that you think we might want to talk about it a bit more. I think generally the changes to the bylaws were mostly geared around making it more clear and consistent mm -hmm. with the um, Human Rights Commission's mission um, and also on updating some of the language in the definition section mm -hmm. since we considered the definition section, section as it was to be a bit redundant and to have some language that didn't really reflect um, our current understanding of the issues at hand. So would it be okay if I just asked some questions along the way and maybe that's the best, the most efficient way to do it? Yeah, I think that would work from okay. my perspective. Okay, so I have a list if that's okay. <laughs> okay, so on the um, definitions, so it looks like you removed the definition for gender identity, right? Um, and that what you're trying to do is sort of standardize the definition of human rights on the um, the UN's definition of human rights. Is that sort of what you're set the goal of the, it's sort of aligning it with what the UN is defined as human rights? Yeah, we went with the UN definition largely out of convenience, but also because it's an extremely universal mm -hmm. definition. Um, we felt if we were going to have a definition section, that was probably a pretty good um, term to put in there. It's obviously central to our mission, and we consider the UN definition to be the best reflection of current understandings of human rights. Okay, good. And then in 3.3b, uh, it looks like you take out the term gender. Um, or no, do you? Let me see. It's a genetic information. Oh, yeah, you took out the genetic information. I wasn't... I don't even know what that honestly means, but... Um, but is there a purpose? Were you like, oh, we really want that out? Or is this just like a cleanup type thing? Um, we had the same issue with it. Uh, we couldn't figure out what it really meant either. <laughs> um, we went over the definition and at every corner, there were potential issues with the way that it could be implemented. Um, it basically defined it as anything that can be accessed from a genetic test, but that um, end up being a pretty circular definition. Um, we felt that, especially given that it's not an excessively common category in major um, rights legislation, uh, so we didn't really have much of a model to go off of for an effective implementation of genetic information, that the categories that we had listed um, were adequate to cover Good. all protected classes necessary. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um... The, there's some uh, there's some minor changes that don't really make that much difference, I don't think. Um, um, so the way we have the, the director enforcing, 
um, and it's sort of how we do how we receive complaints. Um, that was that you wanted to establish the procedures. Um, and so what's different when I read this, it looks like it's, I guess one of the terms you use somewhat frequently is um, in conjunction with, and I don't know, we'll have to ask our lawyer about the, what does that legally mean? Maybe, I mean, Pamela's here now, she may understand, but it says in, we're on section G, I think, or whatever it is, it's three. Um, it says that in conjunction with the commission, the director shall in writing establish procedures. So um, it, t I think we will want more uh, more crisp language on that. And that's that's something our attorney can put together in terms of like in conjunction with, does that mean both parties have to say yes? Does it mean there has to be consultation with the HRC? Um, what if one party says, no, I don't like it. That we just want to be clear what roles people are playing on this. But it's the way I read it, it's right now it's rated, it says that the director shall set procedures and what you're saying is that we'd like the HRC would like to have a role in setting those procedures. Am I reading that right? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Um, I don't know specifically about the in conjunction with language. It's possible that um, Ronnie or Pamela has a better idea of um, how they saw that language. I mostly just saw that sort of language as meaning in collaboration with. I didn't really um, think through all of the details of that yeah, part of it. That's why, that's why we have attorneys who will look at it yeah. from a legal point of view. And that's fine. I just want to understand what the intent is. And that's what we want to understand and whether that's something you know, that we're in agreement with or not. Um, well, before we move on, um, hey, if I may I... interject, the intent is simply that we didn't think this, the procedures were something that the Director of Human Rights should do without the involvement of the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. And we did see it as something where the Commission would have a voice in how those what those procedures are and how they would be implemented. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, as you say, I think it's something we should discuss with the lawyer because there were several uh, issues with regard to confidentiality mm -hmm. when, in terms of the implementation of the procedures and how the procedures would protect that and at the same time bring in the expertise that the HRC already has um, yeah. into the procedures. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, just so you know, our attorney, it's KP Law, they represent 150 communities in the Commonwealth, they look at, so every every community has something like this. They they will have looked at a broad range of, they'll know what other communities do as well. So they'll be able to put it into context, like no communities do it this way. Everybody does it this way instead of that way. So it's very helpful for them to bring their expertise to it. But I, I understand what on, you're saying. Before you go on, yeah. um, that clause actually doesn't have to do with doesn't need any confidentiality whatsoever it's about establishing procedures it's not right. about evaluating cases and so i want to know what does the commission want do you want to have input or do you want to have shared decision making that's the question paul is asking so i would rather us make that decision and or at least discuss it and say what we want rather than saying oh well the lawyer will just tell us because if the lawyer is going to tell us, I'm pretty darn sure she's going to say you get input and not shared decision making. That's actually fine with me. But I don't I'm new here and I don't know what you all were thinking, um, you know, when these initial modifications were made. So um, I do think input rather than shared decision making is fine. I don't know in, in procedure development. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what you all wanted. And partly I feel that way because Pamela is the director. <laughs> and I'm not worried about what Ke Pamela is going to propose, you know, and I know that Pamela is going to actually get input from us one way or another. But um, I'm just wondering what other people were thinking about this. Does anybody else want to weigh in? So the way it was written, there was no input. And in fact, the commission didn't even know what the cases were, only the co-chairs knew. I think that was part of it, that we felt like the commission should be, should have, there should be room for the commission in the procedures. 
and there wasn't room for the commission because of confidentiality. Um, but we felt like a solution could come up, could be developed. Uh, it wasn't discussed in sufficient detail to answer your question, Deb, um, but we just opened that up. We were not, that's why I said, let's discuss with the lawyer, not to accept what the lawyer says, but to sort of figure out what are our options here, realistically speaking. Okay, I see Jennifer's hand. Yeah, I was just going to add that when it comes to procedures, anytime there's a change in the administration, there's a different interpretation of it. And so I, um, having someone, so while, so having input and having shared is, are two separate things when it comes to the procedure. But just keep, I would just keep in mind, like we all love Pamela, we're glad that she's here, but she's not going to be here 25 years from now, or maybe she would be, but <laughs> if she's not here 25 <laughs> years from now, and how is that next person going to interpretate that? Are they going to change the procedure? So it's just something to think from a procedural standard of um, of how things are done. They could change it either way if that was what they wanted to do, but just thought I'd add that. Okay, thank you. Paul, I see your hand up. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I think this is, so Ronnie, this is just the procedures piece. It's not about cases or content of cases. So it's just about setting procedures. Um, and I think the idea of procedures is that it outlives any current director that we set a set of procedures. And then that is how we, because when people look at how we do things, they look at things over years, not just, oh, we have a new person, they do it differently. So I think the idea of procedures is to help us standardize some of the things. So so I, we can just put a question mark on this. I, does it mean consultation? Does it mean input? And, and it, this is not a fine. This is just, we're just gathering questions tonight. So this is helpful. And and you guys can think about it. And next time we talk, we can weigh in on it more. Uh, the next thing I have on, on the list um, is to see. There's not a whole lot that don't change significantly. Um, oh, the one thing I notice is it's like it's looking for a twice a year report, and you also have the annual report to the town council, right? Um, and I guess the question for you is: is is a semi annual report? what you want, do you want, I mean, how often do you want the report to be done? And what does it, is included in that report? I actually have a question about that because I don't remember saying we want to submit more reports. Uh, was it something different? I think we just said we would submit the one human rights report once a year to the town council as we're charged to do. Pamela? This is a... I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Paul. Pamela no, had a hand. Pam, yeah, I should do that. Too. Yeah, I think this is one of the areas where there was inconsistency between um, the bylaw and um, the charge, and so the suggestion I that I made in my comments is like one annual report rather than um, than two. So th I, I there's some inconsistencies between the the two documents, and I. I'm sorry I'm late, but I left Amherst and ran in late and then ran into traffic getting getting home. Um, traffic? Really? <laughs> so. So. Let's see. So I think the then then I have these the pr proposed procedures. Um and I think the sort of thing there is about is the time frames. So you have sort of two time frames. One is six months. You have a time frame for six months, and then you've got a time frame from six months to two years, and then and then there's a two year plus time frame where, where you don't consider anything. And so I think that that's a um, a discussion point as well. Is like um, what is the goal of a complaint? What is it an air ability to air and or exactly what is what's the goal on that piece? Because um, I think right now, I'm not sure what it says right now, if we have a procedure right now, actually. Uh, 
Pamela, do you have Ilya Good to you? There are no procedures now. So I think um, one of the um, critical things that uh, KP Law will do will be to help uh, revise and standardize procedures because there, there were none in place. Like the bylaw simply states that there's a, that the commission and the director will establish procedures, but none had been established. So uh, I think that will also um, speak to the consistency of how things are done, because if the procedures are included in the bylaw, then that's how the operations will work until there's a bylaw change. So that's a really important piece is to figure out what's the best procedure um, to have. And so there was, uh, so I actually am the person who advocated for like six months because um, generally that would be in line with the, uh, the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. And beyond that, um, the person would not have at, um, at generally, beyond that generally, the person would not have um, access to um, to the MCAD, and their their only recourse would be through a civil suit. And I I, I felt like it was better to have the uh, statute of limitations align with Mass Commission Against Discrimination. But there are others in the commission who felt like it was important for people to still have an opportunity to voice their um, you know to voice a grievance even though they may not have an avenue through mass commission against discrimination to pursue a claim. So, and it would be interesting to see what KP law um, has to say about that. Um, and, you know, what advice they might give. Okay. And let me just clarify, Tyler, were you saying that you, th I'm sorry, I should raise my hand. Sorry. I was just wondering if Tyler wanted to comment on it. I know I do. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I was more in favor of a longer statute of limitations, especially since it takes people so long to find out the complaint process exists usually, um, especially in some of the cases where it's the most needed um, for that matter, which would be cases where um, people just end up in a situation where they feel that they need to come to um, a governmental authority over a... Um, human rights abuse, uh, in which case they're, in, where it arises more spontaneously, at least, they're not very likely to know about the resources that exist and it's likely to take more time for them to discover them. However, um, I did ultimately end up agreeing that the uh, two year time frame was uh, acceptable, especially since it's in line with um, other uh, jurisdictions time frames and therefore kind of helps to establish consistency. But all the same, I definitely did recognize and still do recognize a fairly compelling argument in favor of doing it differently with the longer statute of limitations. So I would add on from that, sorry, did I? No, go ahead, Ronnie, I was calling upon you. Oh, okay. So I would <laughs> add that for one thing, it's sometimes uh, human rights violation can be um, somewhat traumatic. And I don't want to use an overly dramatic word, but let's say you have an incident with the police who everybody's afraid of. So it can take time to come forward. So we wanted to have that time. It may be that it's not possible to refer that person to a uh, legal resolution. But the part that I wanted to bring forth more in our documentation is that we do have this, re this option of having a conference and trying to work outside the legal framework. And I think we underestimate that when we say, oh, there's nothing really that we can do. Well, there's no legal recourse, but we have to become good at trying to find more sort of human and community-based uh, recourse I also believe there's a lot of power in just being able to say and be heard about what you experience. And so that's why the six months felt short to me. Um, and I guess I feel fairly strongly about the two years, uh, but 
you know, obviously there's going to be a, a vote and I would go with what people agree, but that's my thinking on it. Mm -hmm. Good. I have a different topic, Liz, if that's okay. Um, are you all set with your questions around? Yeah, no, this is along the same lines. Um, okay. So um, the question is about the, I think, Pamela, you said you, you put the, um, the, the um, procedures in the bylaw. Um, and I, I, just, I, I think that's worth a conversation as well. I think probably with Lauren just sort of procedurally, sometimes, sometimes you try to keep the bylaw relatively simple, and then the sort of operating principles, you know, like our, our, for instance, our personnel bylaw is relatively simple, but the regulations are more extensive because you want to be able to change that. You know, if if we find we have to change something in a procedure for some reason, there's a law change, we have to change something. It's easier to change it at, in this body versus going through the bylaw change policy, which has to go through the town council and there's a, you know, a notification and all the kind of stuff that happens. So I, I didn't know, know if you were saying that, Pamela, do you wanted to put it in the bylaws or it was a standalone document? So I, I think either or, um, but there's right now the bylaw just makes reference to procedures. So it, I would say that at a minimum, it should, you know, that they should be established and there's the reference should send it to some document because there aren't any procedures and that's a I, I, I feel like that's a huge gap like people should know what the process is um, regardless of whether it's six months or two years there's no there's nowhere that anyone could have uh, would have any indication of what the process is and we that needs to be made public somehow so okay. whether it's part of the bylaw or whether it's a standalone, um, procedure published on the Human Rights Commission website, but right now it's the procedure is basically um, documented through oral history. Like so. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's those are the comments I had on the on your proposed changes. Um, I think the next step is to sort of package this up and send it off to the, the attorney, get, let them start to grapple with it a little bit. And then um, either, I mean, I, th I think we have a couple options uh, for you to consider. We could, since this is a bylaw that, you, and I assume this is a bylaw that you're going to propose to be adopted. It's going to be a commission's initiative bylaw. That's, I think that's your intent, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and so it might be that it's always helpful, at least when the town council has to consider something, if we've had legal, we, we want the legal review in advance. So they could either meet with the co-chairs or they could meet with the full committee, however you want to sort of do this. Um, we can try and match up the schedules and things like that. So let me, let me talk with them and see what, and then like I'll confer with the co-chairs and you can think about how you want to gather the legal or any representatives from your committee. Um, how you want to gather that information. I'm glad you added any representatives because I yeah. would definitely want Tyler there. <laughs> um, so do you happen to, and I'm saying this and you may not know, um, how long this procedure will take for us to get packaged up, sent to the lawyer, lower response, yay, nay, we need to talk to you more. Uh, presentation to the town council, voted upon, oh. you don't know the extent. Yeah, no, I do. Um, the legal piece will be, can be relatively quickly. I think it's, it's, it's a, just, a, it, it's a matter of weeks prior to, you meet monthly. So I think prior to your next meeting, certainly have something back to you. Um, you know, I think that it, we might be, um, and then I think I think the town council is they're pretty much wrapping up for the year, quite honestly. I think you're going to be doing this in early at the when the new council takes takes um, takes hold, and it's um, so it'll probably be something we either present in December um, or present in January after the it'll be up to the council president at that point what what they're putting they're they're sort of 
shedding things from their agenda at this point in time because they only have a certain number of meetings left this calendar year. And then the new council has to form and take shape in January. That makes so it, it'll make sense. It'll be a few months. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty. Does anybody have any other questions around either the bylaw changes itself or any questions to Paul about the timeline? Okay, so on to our next agenda. Um, Paul or Pamela. So I, um, because I dashed into from the car, I don't have the agenda in front of me. So I'm, I don't know if you have you already addressed the the charge or is that next on the agenda? We have not addressed the charge. Okay. So. Somebody uh, help me out with that. So the um, is that next on the agenda, the charge? Well, next on the All agenda right. is the HRC bylaws, yes, and the budget discussion that we wanted to have with Paul and or Lynn. And I do believe Lynn said she could be here around 7. Um, I yeah. wonder if we could just go ahead with the budget because I feel like Lynn's main role is really about representation to the town council. So mm -hmm. if we have Paul here, why don't we just... Sure. I would suggest we jump into the budget without Lynn. Okay. I thought but that maybe we wanted Lynn as part of that as well because the um, town council is currently looking over the budget for upcoming years. Okay, let's move I, on then. Um, so the next on the agenda was updates um, on the Affordable Housing Trust specifically and DEI and CREST specifically. So um, my update on the Affordable Housing Trust is that they are continuing to look at ways to make um, to have affordable housing be a goal in the town of Amherst. They are looking into, um, and I know this has been on the agenda for a while, is um, changing the East Street School, which is the building that's across the street from Fort River into affordable housing, that they're looking at um, uh, Belcher Town Road properties and make having affordable housing there. Um, they're also... Uh, talking about a homelessness prevention program and um, that's in the beginning stages um, um, and they're also um, taking a look at some of the zoning policies that are um, folks are asking to change for the town so those are the major um, agenda items on the affordable housing trust and anybody that wants to attend those meetings um, second Thursday, but you can look at the, um, on the town website to get their meeting dates as well. Um, the, um, I also was able to attend a very, very long, um, CSSJC meeting last week where, um, Cress was the main topic of that discussion and there's some updates coming up from Pamela but um the CSSJC was um not happy with um what's going on right now with Cress and the uncertainty of Cress and the um makeup of their leadership team as it is designed currently I'll just leave it at that and let Pamela and anybody else who's going to update on um, Crest. You're muted. You're muted. I'm tired. <laughs> so <laughs> tomorrow will mark like the one month in for the interim leadership team. So the interim leadership team is myself, uh, Tim Nelson, who's the um, 
can't even talk at this point. Fire um, chief. Of the fire department. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Janet Griffin from the uh, police department and Kat Newman, who is has the title of current title is implement grant implementation uh, manager, but was previously the program assistant, which that position was sort of like the um, the second in charge, like even though the title doesn't suggest suggest that. Um, the implementation team makeup was actually my suggestion because um, when um, through the executive team um, leadership meeting with the town manager, it was suggested that I was the ideal person to take this on. Uh, I really insisted that we have a team approach because while I feel that I have many of the skills that are needed to help shore up the department, I don't have all of them and I don't have a lot of public safety um, uh, background, although I do have some. So we prepared uh, basically a chart that outlines the various skill sets that I think are needed in this transition period that looked at experience supervising, you know, um, a large department, you know, more than two people, um, experience with, um, with reorganizations, experience with human right, uh, with uh, HR, experience with grant development and implementation, just outlined a lot of the executive skill set. And uh, if you were to look at that chart, you would see that the team basically has between 12 and 48 years on these various topics, like we all in various spots. So with Chief Nelson having um, the most experience of us, but the others having um, a variety of different um, experiences. The I think that the primary purpose of the team, which is transition, right? It's not to be there long-term, is to help shore up the department so that uh, a new director can be appointed and the team can continue on with its journey towards being an, uh, an alternative response to some types of calls. And so if actually it's been a fascinating month, uh, we started out with the leadership team meeting with the responders on September 19th. We had a full day retreat um, starting with the restorative justice circle, where responders had an opportunity to discuss their hopes and fears for the department. Um, that was followed up with uh, um, a discussion about mission and values. There, um, there is, are there, I would say at that point, we're coming closer together now, but at that point, there was really two different camps among the responders about what their work should look like with some leaning heavily into the social services space and others leaning heavily into the public um, public safety space. And, and really this department is meant to be sort of a combination of the two. Like um, it's got a very unique uh, foothold in the work that they're trying to, you know, that they're tasked with doing. So um, that conversation with the responders were, were, were it was really great. And uh, we ended up, we um, looking at the previous mission statement, which I think really was more like a vision statement because it was like a page and a half and writing a very succinct mission statement that looks to what the purpose of the organization is and having that be uh, a process where everyone, all of the responders were involved um, so that we could come to some agreement about like, what are what are you tasked with doing? And, and we have begun to, uh, make sure that we're following that mission. So we've instituted some um, practices that I think uh, were, in my opinion, sort of slack around procedures. Um, the responders are being asked to utilize their radios when they go out on a call and to call in, just the standard procedure. Um, we have um, have uh, set aside Tuesdays as an in-service day where responders will have an opportunity to get new training and refresh their training. Um, and that's happening on a weekly basis. We've also identified some uh, training opportunities outside of the department. So for example, uh, all the responders went down and met with uh, Mike Curtin in dispatch 
and had an opportunity to review their protocols around communications in the radios and working with dispatch. Um, two, well, four responders at two different times have gone to um, crisis intervention uh, team trainings in the in Hampshire County. Um, Vanessa, one of the responders, and Kat are scheduled to go to another CIT training, full day training tomorrow. Um, we identified uh, training opportunities that hadn't occurred for the for the responders, and we're putting those in place. So some of the responders had gone through the basic EMT training, some had not. All of those things are are really designed to shore up uh, the department. And in addition to that, um, we've taken the leadership team and all of the responders met with the Department of Public Health, which is a primary funder for the work and have reviewed the initial grant that established the department. There is There are some gaps between what was proposed in the grant and what has occurred operationally. Um, as we uh, work to um, renew that grant by do, providing the, the grantors with an update, we're trying to bring operations and what was stated in the grant more aligned. So to bring those, those things um, together, um, the uh, grantors had an in-site visit with the department. They met with the town manager, the HR director, the leadership team, and all of the responders and the the, their meeting with the responders did not include the leadership team, so they were able to freely talk with them and discuss any concerns or raise questions. Um, I, I think uh, it's, uh, I can safely say that they felt like we have positioned the, the department to, um, to move forward in a very positive way that's in line with what the grant stated it would do and um, with the operations um, that we have in place. Uh, the leadership team has been a part of the Harvard Government Performance Lab cohort. So that's uh, a non-fiscal grant that the department received under um, um, the prior director's leadership that allows us to meet with other um, communities who are in the process of establishing similar um, departments. And I say similar because each community, as the more and more I, we had our second meeting, or I had my second meeting with the Harvard uh, Government uh, Performance Lab cohort today, and each community and state is approaching this work very differently. There is no one, you know, best practice. So, um, you know, locally, you know that Northampton has established their model in uh, in the public health uh, realm. In Amherst, the decision was made to have this as a standalone in public safety. We had extensive conversations today in our cohort with a gentleman from um, Virginia, where as a state, they have decided to set up regional um, responses so so that that aligns with their five regional mental health, um, you know, service areas. So each department is doing is is really doing the work very differently. The uh, the affiliation with Harvard, I think, is going to bear a lot of fruit because they are providing us with information about some of the challenges that have been presented to the department around dispatching calls. I mean, it's it's a, one of the questions that I asked uh, today in that Zoom meeting was, you know, what uh, resources, what data do you have about the startup time from conception to dispatch? And the response from Harvard, and they will send this data and I'll be happy to share it with you, was that on average, it takes a department a year and a half to two and a half years to get to the point where they're dispatching calls. And we're just at that one and a half year mark, not quite there yet. So um, so we, you know, I think we're we're where we should be. The other bit of information from the Harvard Performance Lab was that most communities start with very few calls. Um, 
call types. And so we're having that discussion about what the call type should be. And in fact, so um, uh, this will come up, a, there's a little bit of, of course, overlap between DEI and CRESS because I'm <laughs> wearing two hats. Um, but uh, so five, one, two, three, four, Four of the responders participated in the liberatory visioning sessions that were conducted by Dr. Barbara Love. And um, as a follow-up to that session, um, there's a group of municipal staff employees who are in a group that we call the core equity group. That group meets uh, monthly and for two hours and works on DEI initiatives, self-learning and um, with the goal that they're gonna be seeds that are spread throughout the municipality. So that um, the core equity group met on Tuesday. Um, there were eight of us in the room and six of us had participated in the liberatory visioning um, uh, sessions. Uh, the follow-up session that we did in core equity was to build on what are the skills uh, and techniques that you use to build um, coalitions and co consensus building? And um, how do you have these very difficult conversations? So I led that workshop and then following the workshop, two of the responders who were uh, who participated in the group thought this is a great technique for us to use for discussion around call types. So actually um, I said, I think that you guys should lead that next in service. You know, you've had some training, you can lead your colleagues in this process, I will support you, but they'll be leading the, the next in service, which is scheduled for Tuesday around call types, using the techniques that they've learned both through Dr. Love's liberatory visioning and through the consensus and coalition building workshop that I did. So we're providing lots of opportunities for responders to have professional development. I met with each of them individually at the um, at the inception and, and had you know a really in-depth conversation with them about their their work in the department, their challenges, their goals, their um, both long term and um, and short term. Uh, you know, I, I um, actually, before I headed home tonight, I sent them a note saying, congratulations, we're one month in, and I think we have done remarkable work for the last 30 days, given where we were on September 20th. Um, and I, um, you know, I, I, I am proud of the work that we're doing. I am very proud and um, and I really think that the team approach was the right leadership approach. I know that there are members of the community who have concerns about it. Um, what I said to the CSSJC at their, I missed the October meeting, but um, but at their prior meeting was that, you know, I did not take this task on to fail. Uh, I don't, I want to, I don't want to have this job forever. Like I'm very clear about that. I've said that publicly to everyone who's listening to me, but I didn't, it is my, it is my sincere hope that at the end of the this interim period, this department will be in a better position for the next director. And I'm doing everything I can to ensure that. So I um I am I, you know, I've discussed with the leadership team and with the town manager what the final report from our interim leadership team will look at, like all of the activities that we've done. I've I've suggested that I think it's important that an audit be conducted, a financial audit, because if I were the person who was coming in, with, I would want to know exactly everything that um, that I'm taking on, not only the personnel issues, but also having uh, assurance about where the finances are, where the grants, what's left of the grant, what can I do, what I can't do. And so I think we'll have a very comprehensive um, perspectives to give to the NEC director, along with a lot of recommendations, but they won't be just that recommendations. It's not um, our intention to decide some of the critical issues that I think has that have to be made about the, the um, about the future of Cress. And um, so, I, you know, I, I think that Cress is in really an, an excellent position for, for where we are. Yeah. Well, thank you for that report. Um, 
I raised my hand, A, because I was going to tell you we needed to move on a little bit. Yeah, we have a lot <laughs> sorry. Of things under the agenda. And also to just say that um, because you missed the meeting with, uh, I knew that you or Paul were part of the discussion that the CSSJC had um, specifically around Crest and where we are right now with them. I'm hoping that you all can reach back or at least attend the next meeting um, because they had some very strong reactions and recommendations for what is and what is not going on with Crest right now. Yeah. Uh, so that, that way. Yeah, so the leadership team, um, and then I'll move on to DEI, which I'll do very quickly and invite Jennifer to um, to um, to add as well. So the leadership team was scheduled to meet with Cress at their last meeting. However, that was also the evening of the candidates information night. I reached out to the chair and informed her of the conflict and she decided to go ahead with their meeting. Um, but we uh, we are scheduled to meet with them in November. Okay. Yes, they did mention all of that at the at the meeting that I was at, um, present at. Um, Deb, did you have something to add for about Cress? Yeah, just a quick question. I really appreciate this update, but my burning question is what's happening with the director being on admin leave and how long is that going to take? And that was part of what the strong discussion was mm -hmm. uh, at the CSSJC meeting last week. But Pamela or Paul? Yeah, so I can address that. So uh, Earl Miller has submitted his resignation. So he will be, he's employed by the town until November 30th. Um, and so after that, but that means we will begin looking for a new Crest director immediately. That's a relief. I mean, just a, there's a path. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. And um, so last thing about Crest is that um, the responders, you know, that we had two resignations. There was already one vacancy and we had two resignations. The responder position has been posted and yay, we've gotten the first application for, for that position. So we're on our way to, to filling that position. So um, quickly for DEI, um, so we're off to a little bit of a slow start with youth programming, but Asa and Jennifer have an, a plan for the beginning of uh, of youth programming and out, an outline for how we're gonna gonna tackle that. Um, we, um, as a department, I mentioned already the core equity team meeting that was on Tuesday. Um, the department is sponsoring um, three workshops for uh, internally for um, for staff. The first of them uh, happens on Friday around microaggressions and implicit bias. Uh, a second one on supervision through a DEI lens happens in November. Those two workshops were scheduled to be um, facilitated by uh, staff from Amherst College. And for, unfortunately, Amherst College is not able to make uh, the Friday workshop. So I'm stepped in to, to try to take that on um, so that we are not canceling, we'll just go for it with me facilitating. The third um, workshop that we'll have in December is a repeat of, um, of a workshop that we've done before. It's a light lift because there's a lot going on in the department. It is a diversity coffee house. So it's a, it is a self-guided um, tour through a lot of different DEI topics where people have the ability to, um, to do self-reflection exercises, to have conversations with their colleagues, um, to ask questions of the DEI staff. Um, and then um, the Festival of Lights, which HRC and DEI are doing together. And Jennifer, I'm sure I've forgotten something, so please jump in. She may have stepped away from her computer for uh, a moment. I see, Asa, if you're listening, if I've forgotten something in, that you're aware of, please jump in as well. Oh, I didn't step away. I just, uh, sometimes on the phone, it's so hard to toggle back and forth. And so I apologize for that. I was like trying to turn the camera on and so forth. Oh, yeah, there we are. Hello. So we... Um, 
Asa and I worked on a timeline. So the, the bulk of the timeline, I think, has to do with the outreach and um, connecting with the youth so that a relationship can be built so that they can kind of inform us of what they would, what kind of activities they would like to see happen um, since it is youth programming or what kind of programming. And then also, um, sorry, it's kind of noisy in my house. I don't know if you can hear all of the background noise, but I apologize. Um, it's dinner time. So uh, we are also doing a workshop for town hall and the amateur recreation department. So it's November 30th and I, I mean, um, October 30th and I believe um, November 2nd. I don't, I haven't given it its full name, but I have some really creative ideas and activities to happen. So I'm very excited. Um, and what else are we doing? We're doing, I feel like we're doing a lot though. Um, Asa, do you wanna, did we forget anything? Um, no, I believe it's a good summary of our plan so far. Okay, well, thank you for those updates. I am going to take a little bit liberty since I see that Lynn Grishmeyer is in our audience and ask Jennifer to move her in to be a panelist so that we can talk to her about um, the two other agenda items that we had before the updates. And she should be in now, I think. Yes. Lynn, are you there? I am. Hi. Hi. Sorry, Welcome. I couldn't join you earlier, but it sounded like a it's rich okay. discussion. We, we uh, picked Paul's brain about some things <laughs> before you got here, mostly because of our bylaws. And I'm sure you'll be getting uh, wind of those things soon. Um, slim, slim pickings there, Liz. <laughs> We specifically asked you to come for two reasons. Um, at our retreat, we were informed that we had a town council representative to the HRC. Um, is that true? And if it is, who is that person? And if it's not true, how do we get that information? And do, should we have one? And how do we then get that person on board with us? So because you shared this issue with me in advance, I was able to double check my notes with Athena O'Keefe, who's a uh, clerk to the town council and frankly has a brain that's, you know, focused on all of this. And you do not have a, a liaison. Uh, the liaisons are determined at the beginning of each year. Um, I have already at our meeting, town council meeting on Monday, mentioned that you were interested in having a liaison. And at that time also said that that would be something that the next council who is sworn in on January 2nd would need to bring forward the council dis votes, if you will, on the slate of committees that will be have liaisons. And then we bring that back and individual counselors um, continue to perform in a liaison capacity. But let me also mention that liaisons um, don't have to attend all your meetings, but they're there to answer questions, although they are not an official member of the, of the committee. Uh, so it's a very important role. And, um, but let me just offer that between now and the end of this term for the council, I am more than glad to be, quote, act as a liaison uh, to this committee. Okay. Um, does that deserve, does, are we supposed to vote on that? No, we don't have to vote on that. Well, I've um, already made we'll note that you've asked for a liaison. <laughs> so I okay. hope that uh, I hope that that's, I mean, you can vote to see whether I'm acceptable as a liaison or not, whatever you want to do, but I offered to be, you know, provide that service. Thank you. I don't think we need to vote on that. Okay. Um, the second part of, um, as when we were discussing our um, upcoming events and our past events, 
Um, we had a list of all of the events that we uh, sponsored or co-sponsored last year. Mm -hmm. And we um, said, if we would like to do some of these things and more in the future, we would need a budget. Mm -hmm. And given that the town council is in the process of taking a look at next year's budget, we wanted to put that on the table and wanted to know, do we need to come to a meeting to do a formal presentation? Um, when we took a look at, if we could have everything we wanted, it would be $22,000 for the year. Um, I think personally, and I'm sure you will agree, Lynn, because you attended most of the events that we sponsored, um, that that is a small tip in the bucket in order to bring some unity to this community, if you will. So um, what is our next step um, and how do we get a proposal or whatever on the town council budget mm, request or I don't know the word, the right word to use. Uh, first of all, let me just say, I think that the service you have provided to the many different communities in Amherst by having the events that you have has been just phenomenal. I, um, the one I think I remember the best was the one that was at the middle school and I arrived and basically Jennifer came up to me and said, can you go out and get more cups? Can you go get more juice, et cetera, et cetera. And then she came back and she said, so do you have a slip? I said, don't worry. I, we covered it. And so Andy Steinberg and I got in a car, drove to Big Y, picked up all that stuff, came back. It was fantastic. And so I just want to say, yes, I have been at most of those events. I find those events to be one of the best ways to really understand the face and the thoughts and the cultures of our many communities in Amherst. And it's just fantastic. So what I would like you to do is send a letter or an email, email is fine. It's an official document to me and to the town manager and CC Andy Steinberg, who's chairing the finance committee and formalize your request. We start the budget process on the 13th of November with the financial indicators. We then move to actually having a budget hearing if you are public forum. You're welcome to come and ask for money. It always helps for other counselors to hear the request directly. That budget forum will be on the 20th of November. And uh, it's a required part of the council, uh, but it's actually a very important part too. And then the council through the finance committee begins to develop budget guidelines for um, the next year's budget. And we give those to the town manager along with his goals. And basically the combination of those two um, documents become a message to the town manager. Here's what we wanna see in your budget. So send us an email and have somebody, please just one of you come or two, the co-chairs, whatever, come on the 20th to the public forum and request your, um, make your request and talk about the many different events you did and the numbers of people and the types of uh, the populations in Amherst that you've been able to reach out to because it is so impressive. And please ask us to do proclamations or resolutions for those various events, which helps draw counselors to the events because they have to read them. Okay, does that help? That's that's very helpful. Okay, thank you. Um, I do believe that's all we actually had for you specifically. Um, mm -hmm. You're welcome to stay. I don't think I can kick the town council president off our meeting. Get out. And that's no. not true. You can kick me out if you want. <laughs> yeah. You always can do that. Okay. Um, so thank you. Does anybody have any other questions or um? statements to Lynn while she's here and okay so we're going to go back down to um, updates um, the next I'm going to skip me, Liz. 
Yes, sir. Is it okay if I I have a family call to get on? Is it do you need me for anything else? I don't believe we do. Okay. No. Thank you all. And thank you for your in attendance yeah, and um, this is great. talking to us today. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Um I'm I wanna skip down just a little bit to D on our agenda. Um at our um, retreat, we did ask all the council members to take a look at all the different governing bodies um, that the town has and be a listening ear, uh, if you will, to some of those um, other committees. Um, again, I've been in meetings with the CSSJC, the uh, um, Affordable Housing Trust, and I was part of a mini committee last year with um, Philip, with um, the CSSJC and with um, the Board of Health as we did a, an affordable housing forum. So um, did, anybody, did anybody or everybody, I'll say, did everybody take a look at the different committees of the town and decide which ones they wanted to be a listening ear in so that we can report back and know what other members of our town government is doing and maybe figuring out how we can support them. And if you did, um, I'm going to ask you to just say it. And um, Jennifer, are you taking notes? Yes, you are. So if Jennifer can just write them down, so make sure you talk slow so that she knows who it is and which ones you're attending. I'm going to start, you know what, I'm going to start with who's at my, I'm going to start up top, and up top to me is Rishwana. Um, if, if you didn't have a chance to do it, just say I didn't have a chance to do it yet, please. Okay, I will, I'm interested in affordable housing authority, but I haven't done it yet. I, okay. I, have, I haven't looked at it yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Bye. Jacinta. I know that, uh, I don't know, Jacinta and Tyler also have classes, so. But Jacinta. Um, yeah, I think um if I can make make any of the meetings, I would try to go to Disability Access Advisory Committee. Thank you. And thank and I you just want to rem remind everyone quickly that the meetings are all recorded as well. So you don't necessarily have to attend it live if that's helpful. Correct. Um, Joy, um, you were not present. You had a conflict, so I'm not sure if you was able to take a look at things. No, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I will. Okay. Um, Ronnie? I'm sorry, I have to say no, apart from the ones I'd already mentioned at the retreat. But as far as making an actual commitment to follow one of these committees, I sort of feel like I have to go to a few of them few of the meetings to decide because I've been to several committees over the last year and including the Human Rights Commission when I first came to Amherst and I dismissed it because there wasn't much going on and there was no quorum and I think I came twice but here I am so I think it takes a little bit of time uh, to get an idea of what the committees are doing so I'm gonna I personally will need time okay that's fair people, but Thank you. Um, Deb, I know you've been busy doing other things, so. Yeah, I, I'm very much interested. I know I don't have the whole name, uh, but the African-American Heritage and Reparations, probably not correct, but I'm very interested in their work. I'm also interested in the schools committee work, and I don't know when I'm going to have enough time to start attending, but um, those are the two that I'm most interested in. Okay, thank you. And yes, Lynn. Yeah, I just want to mention been that been. the AHRA uh, just completed their task and reported to the council this past Monday. Uh, it's now in the hands of GOL to come back to the council to recommend whether there will be a successor committee. So, um, so I have I, a reprieve. <laughs> but only on that one. I think you should <laughs> sign her up for another one. <laughs> That's going to be up to her. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tyler. 
Um, I have not had a chance to, and I don't think it's going to be possible for me this semester. I'm badly overloaded on um, courses and research as is. And that's fair for you, too. That's why I mentioned that earlier. Who am I missing? No. Um, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Asa. Um, did I miss somebody? Uh, Laverne is not here tonight, and she sent oh. an email that oh, she was I traveling and her flights were delayed. So right. she's, she's the. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I got to all the council members that are present right now because there's two people under the bottom of my screen that I can't see who they are. I don't know. All righty. Um, oh, Lord. My computer shuts off. I'm on my phone, but I'm on my computer so I can see the agenda. And, you know, if you don't move the mouse every once in a while, it shuts off. Ronnie, did you have a uh, question or a comment? I'm just remembering what this discussion was about in the retreat and the point of this committee thing was really that we felt that people were not aware of the Human Rights Commission and there was really not much understanding of what exactly we did or what are human rights and so on. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up, that that's the purpose. So one way we thought that we could um, form alliances um, was to go to these committee meetings, but there may be other ways as well. Um, and, it, you know, we can do whatever we want as long as we're out there making ourselves known both for what we do, but also as a place that people can go to in confidence if they experience violations. That was part of it. And the other part was that this, yeah, for other committees, how can the Human Rights Committee also be um, supportive of them? So there's twofold. The, uh, if that's okay, I'm going to move on to the next agenda item, which was the NYT Framework to Analyze HR. Not sure what that means. Um. It wasn't meant to be an agenda item. I just provided it as a background document because we're going to have a discussion about statements and human rights. And it provided one way to think about, um, I don't know, it provided one way to think about and analyze the situation from a human rights lens that I thought was helpful. So I provided it as an attachment to background reading for the commission. Okay. Any, is there any questions or discussion about that at this moment? I, I have, I have I two hands. I am not sure what Deb's hand is up and then there's another hand up. And I think the other hand is up from somebody in the audience. So I'm not sure. Deb, did you have um, something to add? I, I just want to say I really appreciate it. You're including that, um, Ronnie. Thank you. And as folks might imagine, the facts on the ground change uh, almost hourly regarding what's actually happening. Well, facts are also being uh, maybe as a loose term thing. And so facts on the ground are changing hourly um, and specific instances are changing by the day. Like there was an assertion that Israel bombed a hospital and now it's almost, I think it's almost been proven that it was, um, not Hamas, but an, uh, maybe an ISIS, some kind of a, an ISIS attack. So I just, just to say that um, while it's a beautiful lens that you presented and in any specific situation, things change incredibly quickly. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I see two hands up and for the person that's in the audience, um, I see that your hand up and I would love to acknowledge you, but I am, I need for you to hold off until we have our next public comment, if you don't mind. Well, Tyler, your hand is up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought that the reading was very interesting. I've been reading a lot of um, IHL centric stuff on the um, ongoing war. And I think that 
it's extremely useful to use international humanitarian law as a type of metric in these sorts of instances. But as uh, Deborah said, the situation on the ground is changing constantly. I think it's very much an open question as to whether IHL can be easily applied uh, in a live scenario like this, where we don't yet have all the facts. We have not heard crucial elements like witness testimony. We haven't had a chance to comb through news reports or do any sort of statistical analysis, um, which means that while IHL is an extremely useful metric, doing a complete application of IHL right now, especially from uh, a local government thousands of miles away, it would be incredibly, incredibly difficult, if not impossible. So I guess what I kind of want to say as well, it's my preferred metric for looking at instances like this. Um, I think the factors that Deborah highlighted also make it uh, extremely hard to apply, even though it is the probably the best option that we have right now. Any other comments or statements? I am going to then move on to um, 3E, supporting organizations and statements before we have a meeting. Um, I know that Ronnie and I think Deb had a few um, debates going back and forth about this at our retreat. Maybe debate is not a good word, but um, we had a lot of discussion about that um, and who can uh, make these statements and do they then deserve a meeting? And, you know, we had a humanitarian um, statement that came out um, in support of um, our friends and neighbors over in Israel um, and those um, here in the United States and in our town, and that went up on our webpage. But I think we had some discussion about that at our retreat. Um, does anybody else want to weigh in on that? And why was that put on our agenda? And Tyler, is your hand still up for something else or did you just not bring it down? Um, no, it's up for this. Okay, go ahead. Um, I had my concerns with the statement that we put up uh, with regards to the Israel uh, war in Gaza. Um, I, While I agree with the gist of the statement, I think that it is problematic to um, fail to make a clear differentiation between Israel and Hamas. I think that our statement um, almost treated the two of them as if they were both legitimate actors, or at least each actors on the same playing field. Uh, I think that it there is a degree of danger in doing that, because Israel, while a deeply flawed state, uh, is still a state that does most of the time uh, respect most of its obligations under international law. Hamas is a terrorist organization. So I think that... Um, I felt at the time, and I still feel that it is necessary for uh, us to release a separate statement specifically condemning Hamas, or at least making that differentiation between the two entities. Um, I think as well that it would be nice to have a standardized procedure for putting out these sorts of statements. Uh, I think that there should be a way for us to circulate the statement at least a few hours in advance of voting on it so that members can make suggestions with regards to changes in language or such, uh, since it was sort of a difficult decision for me to decide whether or not I wanted to vote in favor of that statement, knowing that it wasn't um, making as strong a condemnation of Hamas as I felt was necessary given the circumstances, especially in the circumstances at that time, which was prior to a lot of Israel's most problematic acts in this particular conflict, and therefore would have made it a more appropriate time than now to take a um, position that at the time uh, is a natural position specifically against Hamas, whereas now, obviously, there's a little bit more um, discussion around Israel's um, ongoing 
conduct that makes it a little bit harder to produce that sort of exact temporal response to specifically Hamas's atrocities. Uh, so I think it would be very useful to have uh, clearly outlined mechanisms to release these statements and release follow-up statements as well where multiple might be necessary so that that way we can have a bit more procedure surrounding this. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Jacinta, uh, you're the next hand I saw. Yeah, um, I think this is a really uh, heavy topic. Um, and I guess I'm just looking at this in a historical perspective, thinking about the word terrorism, especially because it became more um, popularized and legitimated after the 9-11 attacks um, and used to um, stigmatize like Middle Eastern peoples. Um, and for that reason, I just kind of felt um, a little bit like <laughs> a little bit warm um, after that statement. And I do agree that maybe multiple statements would be like a good way to kind of you know, share more specific insight into the situations happening. Um, but I do think like it is worth just understanding that, you know, human loss in general is what is horrific about the situation. Um, yeah, and I do think um, just for that reason, I wanted to, you know, I'm not trying to put down anybody and the experiences and the specific relations that they have to the conflict happening right now. But I do want to say on behalf of, you know, anybody else that is a little bit like, I don't know. I just wanted to say that historically that word and also the treatment of Middle East Eastern people in general, like we don't, we want to, as the human rights commission, we want to make sure that we just acknowledge that in this conversation. Deb, um, your hand was next that I saw. Yeah, I'm curious about how much time we want to spend on this topic. Um, I am heartened that people have um, prioritized it to the extent that a statement was made. And I'm really heartened, Tyler, at your incredibly sophisticated understanding and analysis of what's happening in Israel and Palestine. Um, I don't have a response to the concern about the use of the word terrorism but uh, or terrorist organization but i do want to say um that the palestinians on the ground that i'm in a relationship with um don't see hamas in a good light and don't see hamas as representing them and hamas has as part of its charter the annihilation of every jew on the planet not just the annihilation of israel this is part of their written constitution anyone can discover that. And they called for a jihad against every Jew in the world um, last week to be conducted on Friday, which nothing came of it. So when evaluating um, who actors are, that's something to keep in mind. And just so you know who I am, I think that the occupation is horrific and Israel is a bad actor in a thousand ways, and Netanyahu um, can have many labels attached to him. I would call him a fascist and a Trumpian and um, all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of really nasty things we can say about a lot of the players. <laughs> and um, and I don't know how much time we want to spend as the Amherst, Town of Amherst Human Rights Commission on this. But I think... I thank you for your care. And Tyler, I want to take you to coffee or something and have more conversation and find out what you're studying and who you are, because I'm intrigued by your <laughs> attention to this stuff. Thank you, Deb. Pamela. So I think that the intention was to um, have further conversation about um, the process. My suggestion would be that uh, if it is your intention to end at eight, that you perhaps uh, table this discussion for another meeting. And um, and then I, I think it, uh, it's important to, to think about the discussion and the questions that are raised um, without the context of the 
uh, current situation because you're yeah. thinking about a process. And so um, my, you know, my suggestion is that you that you table the discussion for uh, another meeting and that you limit the discussion to process because you're there's always going to be the possibility of these um you know divergent perspectives so jennifer i was really just going to echo what pamela said um it was put on here because you know there's lots of things can happen in between between meetings but that has to do with human rights or violations of human rights and whether or not and who's going to write a letter of support or a statement to that is needs to be needs to happen before if possible right so i was just really echoing what pamela was saying and that's what I thought this was discussion was going to be about, but as a human being and given what's going on right now, I felt a little bit of liberty to allow people to express how they're feeling about what's going on and how we can better maybe address when there's um, conflicting, I don't want to say conflicting views, because I think everybody is of the understanding that what's going on is not good. Um, and I don't, I don't even have the words, but um, I appreciate everybody's input. Um, we need to put this on the agenda for next meeting, but we wanna talk about the process of how we get um, statements out. And speaking of which, we need to get a statement to uh, email to Lynn and Paul about the budget. And so um, I'm probably gonna try to draft something up and maybe run it by um, Pamela, or Jennifer and Ronnie, and then in, um, send it out. But folks have to remember, which I did not do, is to not reply all <laughs> if they have any feedback um, or if they have any suggestions for what goes into the proposal for a budget discussion or a budget, um, please send them to Jennifer so that she can um, send it to me and Ronnie and we can take a look at it. But I think if we want to be put on the um, agenda for uh, the November 13th, we don't meet before then. So we're going to have to um, get that out before our next meeting. Uh, Ronnie has her hand up. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to be quick, but I felt I needed to own the statement that went out and that it was written very much in a hurry, like in two minutes, with the idea that there would be more feedback. And I wanted to say very specifically, Tyler, that I... No, she froze. I saw your response. I should have certainly would have made the change. And certainly would have made the change you suggested. Um, and I look forward to working out a process because it was very, I felt a terrible responsibility because I could see what was going on and I felt like, you know, I'm a co-chair, I should do something. We need to say we don't like this, this is wrong. Um, but it was very, um, it, anyway, I wanted to own that and say that I do agree that um, we should figure out a process that will work better next time. Thank you. And I'd like, if I'm going to weigh in, um, I'm kind of torn between what Tyler was saying and about the statement in general. I think that any um, any violation of women and children needs to be out there. So I am not, um, I don't think that, I'll, I, I personally don't think that um, we're supporting Hamas, but there's been a lot of innocent people on both sides. Um, it started with Hamas, um, but just like, you know, when we talk about um, Muslims and people are of the mindset that all Muslims are terrorists, and I don't believe that. And, it, and so um, we just need to be careful that um, we're not supporting everybody that's been 
negatively affected by the acts of, and I don't want to say a few because there's many, but a few. Um, it is currently by my watch 759. We have the HRC website, Facebook page, events. I think we need to quickly go over um, our upcoming events. Then we're going to go to public comment, and then we may adjourn if that's okay with everybody. If you, if there's not um, a negative reaction to that, we'll proceed that way. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So um, upcoming events, um, I know that Jennifer and I did meet with um, Becky Demling and, oh my, Shalini um, today, um, more them than me, because I was late because of a different meeting about our um, Festival of Lights celebration that's going to be on November 19th. Um, at Crocker Farm, and we divvied up some responsibilities. Um, Jennifer, if you want to speak a little more about that, you was there more than me. No, nope, you good? It'll be another fabulous event. I just hope those who are in the area um, can put it in their calendar so that they may attend the event. We yeah, have a and since we are co-sponsoring this event, um, we may be calling on you to uh, be in the children's corner or help set up or whatever that we do as a commission, okay? Deb, do you have your hand up? Yeah, can we have a start time? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, let me go back. Deb, do you know off, I mean, Jennifer, do you know off the top of your head? Otherwise, I can pull it up. I have the, I, I have one. Hold I just on. Yep. I had the flyer up earlier and, you know, I just didn't even look at it because usually when stuff happened, um, it was on, yeah, I have so many emails from so many different people. Flyer. Okay, that's not the one with the flyer was on. Okay, go back. Someone can just find it out and maybe send an email. That's fine. Yeah. 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 We're going to also announce it at the next meet. Oh, wait a minute. Got it. Come on. It's from noon to five. There you go. Already on my calendar. Okay. And you know what? I just pulled up the flyer. Yep. 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Crocker Farm School. There'll be dance, poetry, henna food, art, uh, DJ, handicrafts. Yeah. There it is. All right. So um, do we have any other upcoming events that we need to discuss? Not at the moment. Okay. So I am going to table three F and that was it. Three F for our next meeting, which is HRC website and Facebook page. So that's gonna be tabled. Make sure, please make sure that's on our agenda, Jennifer, for our next meeting. Our next meeting will be one eight, the 15th. Unfortunately, I will not be able to be at that meeting. I have a conflict that day. If I can come in and out, I will be there. So please mark your calendars for November 15th at 6.30. And last but not least, now, uh, public comment. Oh, Jennifer, do you have your hand up before that? I just wanted to announce, um, and Lynn spoke on this a little bit, that the AHRA did finalize the report and submit it to the commission. It's on their website, and so please take a look. 
um, it's very, very good. And I just want to folks should know. Okay, thank you. So um, let me see if that, that person was still there. They're still there. So during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The Human Rights Committee will not engage in a dialogue or comment on the matter raised during public comment. So I know that there was someone in the audience that had their hand up earlier. If you would still like to speak, and yes, your hand is up. So Jennifer, if you could pull that person in. Thank you. I gave them permission to speak, I, so here they are. Um, are you are you here, caller? You're they are they are on in the as a panelist, but they are muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? Maybe they don't know who you're referring to. I'm so, referring to whoever yeah, is at 857-247-1074 as the phone number and the person has their hand up. And they are now in our... You can go ahead and um, speak now, caller. How was that, Heather? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Are you still in DR? I can't hear her. May I suggest that um oh, it's possible that she could email or is it possible for you to email? Oh, I can hear you a little bit. No. You are not coming through. So if you could hear me, can you put your hand down so that I know you can hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. I, I'm trying to make all the comments. I'm trying to see if you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm um, not sure if you know who this is, uh, by my voice. This is Lauren Miller. Um, I know many of you and am happy to, to make this public comment. You know, I'm not where it's supposed to be. I will not get in trouble. Um, I just wanted to say a few things that... Um, one, I really wish Cheryl would have been able to see the, the test to probably go to the next level. And I, I really wish him well because I know he worked really hard. Um, but I, I want to reiterate that as a resident that came from um, an urban setting um, from Boston, that living in Amherst for six years, I would really love to see um, the the work of the DEI and work um, that we are doing um, involve more people um, from the community like myself. I, I, I can let you know that I, I'm still um, on the uh, a Board of Health. And there's a lot of issues that um, still uh, are not being funded that need to be addressed with funding. And I know there's a process for doing that. But um, as far as the programming, um, it would just really be nice to, to give a specific uh, for like children in elementary and middle school to um, be able to go to a camp in the summer, you know, 
and not have, parents not have to worry about, you know, what their kids are doing in the summer, but actual either the DEI department or the new programming um, that you guys are planning to just, like, have, like, no specific, um, you know, things for, for, you know, families to rely on, like, you know, making sure that they can, you know, are in school. Um, also, um, there's like a, just a big inadequacy, I think, of you know, the funds that have been um, given to the town, whether it be ARPA funding and other state funding. Like that funding has not been used for public resources. And so there needs to be like more transparency about, you know, how ARPA funds have been used. And yeah, I, I could go on, but I just really wanted to continue to speak about, um, you know, public resources and that there are some um, initiatives that, you know, diverse groups can come together with, but there will have to be specific, I think, activity or um, by far, I think that you guys can keep in mind that there are, you know, specific needs or by far, I think, is, you know, mainly for me as a parent to make sure that my kids are, are you know, being able to, to access um, services in school and after school, and, and that would be a big help. So I hope that you guys can Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lauren, I just want to say that I did get a, I was able to understand a lot of what you said, but there was um, some static and background noises. So I don't know how you would feel about sending an email as well, if it's possible to the Human Rights Commission so that we can fully hear everything or know everything that you said. I was gonna say the same thing. Okay, keeping a track of the time, we have four minutes to 8.15. Is there any other reports that we did or any other topics that we did not get to that um, we did not anticipate in the last 48 hours? Okay, this has been a full meeting. I appreciate everybody's time and attention. Um, we, again, please uh, be available if you can. I, I, I say that knowing that I'm not. Um, November 15th at 6.30. Um, I will meet with Jennifer or I will take a stab at um, a letter or an email to Paul and Lynn about the budget. Um, have Jennifer share it with everybody for any input before we send it off to Lynn and Paul. And I have to take a look at my calendar because my calendar starts getting really crazy about now. Um, November 13th, oh, I am not available that day. I am available on the 20th. So um, I might have to change that and be available. We'll see. Um, if I can't, I will ask um, Ronnie and maybe somebody else to go with her to um, the uh well the process begins on the 20th and lynn we have to be there on the 20 the 20th or the 13th this 20th is the date of the public forum okay so i will definitely be there on the 20th yeah all right but we we Great. need to get you that letter before the 13th okay thank you for clarifying that um are there any other i see somebody's hand up that was still the person that was in the audience. Um, are there, if there's no other questions, comments, or concerns at this time, I will call the meeting adjourned. Or I, I will, wait a minute. Do we need a motion for that? Or just I call get to call it? So I will call uh, the meeting of the October 18th HRC meeting adjourned at 8.14 p.m. Everybody stay safe. <laughs>